Hello and welcome to another pit stop video. This one is for Sagrada, which is designed by Daryl Andrews and Adrian Adamescu, coming from Floodgate Games and playing one to four players. In Sagrada, we are artists and we are competing with other artists to create the most beautiful stained glass window that we possibly can. So first up is the player setup. Everyone's going to get one of these rather fetching player boards. Now in the player boards is going to be slid one of these window pattern cards. Now these range from three to six in difficulty. And that means it's how hard it's going to be to actually build your stained glass window. But it also directly corresponds to how many of these little favor tokens that you're actually going to get. Each player is also going to get one of these private objective cards and it's going to depict one of the colours of the dice in the game and you're going to score points at the end depending on how well you do getting that colour dice into your player board. Now on the table itself we have the score track and we have what are tool cards and these are ways of manipulating your player board a little bit. We'll talk about those later and these are public scoring objectives again we'll talk about them in final scoring so a round is consisted and there are 10 rounds in this game of the start player drawing two dice per player plus one so in this two player game obviously we're going to be drawing five dice uh, obviously in a four player game you'd be looking at nine dice to draw and then what you're going to do the start player is going to roll those dice so you are now going to perform one each of the following actions you can select and place a die onto your player board or you can activate one of these tool cards so first up we're going to show you how you actually place the dice so you're going to start off and you must start off on the edge or on the corners and you can only place either orthogonal to a placed die or diagonally to a placed die. Now there are rules. Now on the board, as you can see, there are white spaces. This means you can place any die of any number onto that space. These shaded spaces all depict a die result. So this one's a three, this one's a four. You must put a three and a four as depicted on there. If it's a color, then a die of that color must go. Now there are restrictions which make it difficult. You can never place two of the same number orthogonally adjacent to each other or two of the same color orthogonally adjacent to each other. So if you look here in this white space, although it looks really good because I can place any color in there, I can't place a blue, a green or a red and I also can't place a one, a two or a four in there. So I'm looking at this roll here and I think really if I'm going to place in there I can only replace this this five but I've got to be really careful that I'm not placing next to an area that only would take a five so that's where the beauty lies so you can also place anything diagonal so I could just fire this blue in there that would be perfectly legal now I talked about the tool cards and that's where these favor tokens come in these tool cards are going to do something to allow you to change either the dice roll or move dice around on your board. For instance, this one allows you to move a die ignoring the value restriction. So you might have a two and you can maybe move it onto a four and that would help you a bit later on maybe to readjust if you've made some mistakes. Some of them allow you just to literally re-roll a die and then possibly take that one. If you can't place it, it has to stay there. Then play would advance to the next player and at the end, the last player to activate would restart the round and it would go backwards. So effectively, the last player to get a turn would have two turns in a row. At the end of the turn, there are gonna be some dice or maybe one or more, depending if not everyone took a die, because at any stage you can say, I don't want to do any of the actions, either or. And those dice would go on there and that just shows you how far the round has advanced and also sometimes you get some of these tool cards that interact with the dice that are on the round track so then after the 10th round we're going to advance to the scoring now scoring means that this flips over and becomes a score track 
which these all would go on. And scoring is for your private objectives. I'm going to score. Now, for this one, I would score for all the numbers added up of green dice on my board. So, for instance, this one now would show a five and a four. I'd get nine points for that if that's the way it finished. That's all I managed to get. We talked about these public objectives. These are available to everyone. This one simply says if you get different denominations of numbers in each column, so a, as it depicts here, a three, a one, a four, and a two. This one is for rows. You must get one of each of the five colors in a row to score that, and that'd be six points. And these ones are for pairs. This one's for three and four. So every three and four together that you've got score you two points. Favor tokens are gonna to score a point, and also, you're going to lose a point for every space that you have not been able to fill. And that is Sagrada. We hope you enjoyed this video. And for more just like it, please go to our YouTube channel, which has uh, pit stops on a wide variety of games. And for more in-depth coverage of gaming, please check out our podcast, The Game Pit Podcast, wherever you get your podcast downloads. Thank you very much for watching.